Hello, everyone of the participants. Today, we are having um, another session of the robotic session. And we are continuing our uh, fruitful discussions in the Agri-Food Forum 2021. And today, what we are talking about, that's working side by side with Agri-Food robots, opportunities and challenges. And today, we're going to have some presentations and we're going to be talking with the experts and representatives of big uh, European consortiums working with the robots in agri-food sector. So uh, let's not wait and let's start from the um, Dr. Rico Motskel. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. Uh, he's Associate Professor of Cognitive Robotics and in Intelligent Systems and at Maastricht University. And today, uh, Dr. Rico is going to be presenting Coresect project. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And also, yeah, many thanks actually for the opportunity of uh, uh, presenting today. So I would like to take this opportunity to present uh, our joint project, uh, Corosect. Uh, Corosect stands for Cognitive Robotic Systems for Digitalized and Networked Automated Insect Farms. Um, Corosect um, yeah, targets one of the key challenges actually that uh, uh, mankind is facing at the moment, and this is uh, generating enough environmental friendly food and uh, exploring actually the required uh, robotic and um, um, other technologies uh, in the areas of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, data science uh, to support um, uh, healthy food production uh, from insects. Um, overall, the uh, project makes uh, major contributions uh, to uh, a variety of different uh, fields. Uh, one of them, of course, is the development of innovative uh, robotic components and the uh, necessary artificial intelligence in order to drive these robots. Um, here on the slide, you see like uh, um, yeah, an overview of the different technologies that are being developed within Corosect. Um, there is an innovative concept uh, of a so-called dynamic cell, where uh, yeah, different robots uh, work together. Um, but you also see like here human workers. So there's an overall concept actually of a close human robot collaboration um, where necessary and uh, strong automation actually where possible. Um, a major um, concern in uh, Corsec indeed is um, to uh, have a healthy collaboration between uh, human workers and uh, robots uh, also in close proximity uh, within the, uh, the insect farms. And then in addition, you see also uh, additional uh, parts here. Um, so we have like uh, additional robots here that are used for uh, transferring, um, in our cases, are crates of insects uh, and uh, other materials that is required for the process of uh, taking care of insects, uh, for the uh, insect rearing process. Um, for this, we have a partner working uh, with uh, automated guided vehicles, AGVs. And uh, you see also the close integration actually with the different stages that are required in order to uh, yeah, take good care of the insects. Uh, insects uh, develop uh, during uh, yeah, uh, different stages of their life cycle, requiring different uh, uh, conditions, and these are provided also by the insect farms. Um, all of this um, yeah, is, of course, already like uh, pushing quite a bit uh, the boundaries of uh, technological developments, but uh, by itself, the components uh, are um, yeah, even more useful, of course, when they are well integrated. And uh, also here, Corosect follows a uh, state-of-the-art concept uh, of integrating workers and uh, multiple robots together into an overall ecosystem um, that is then being centrally controlled by a manufacturing execution system. So uh, in the end, um, yeah, the workers actually inside the uh, factories are really put into control uh, of the different robotic com uh, components um, to receive the necessary information. And um, there's also partners actually involved uh, with deep knowledge about insect rearing that are developing uh, decision support systems, um, helping uh, a good rearing process for these insects. Um, yeah, to summarize, uh, overall, the impact of uh, Corsect 
um, the uh, goal of COSEC is to make a vital contribution to securing sustainable environmentally friendly food production uh, for humans and animals uh, with uh, insects at a large scale and in an automated way. Um, with this, uh, COSEC also makes uh, a yeah, impact and uh, adds basically um, to uh, reducing the risk of uh, international conflicts by helping uh, both the environment, protecting the environment, but also by protecting and increasing the quality of uh, yeah, food sources available actually for people worldwide. Um, the particular interesting part of uh, producing food from insects is that uh, greenhouse gas emissions and organic waste actually can be massively reduced. Uh, insects are even able to be uh, fed actually from some organic waste. So um, you can generate uh, cyclic um, processes um, that are also taking care of organic waste while actually uh, food sources are being produced. Um, land and water resources can be used more efficiently. And uh, last but not least, of course, COSEC uh, makes a huge impact by advancing the state of the art in robotics, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, and digitalization for industry uh, and agriculture, and thereby also improving working conditions of workers and boosting the competitiveness of uh, yeah, the EU in robotics and artificial intelligence. Thanks a lot. Thank you a lot. Thank you for the short brief introduction of the Coresec project. And let's continue further. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to Daniel Calvo Alonso. He's a head of a, the Artificial Intelligence Data and Robotics Unit at AITOS Research and Innovation. And um, today, um, Daniel is gonna be presenting um, the project FlexiGrobots. Please, Daniel. Okay, thanks so much. I will share my screen uh, in order to show you the slides I have prepared about the project. So, okay, so first of all, thank you so much for, for the invitation uh, to have the opportunity to, to talk in this in this great panel and to present what we are doing in FlexiRobots project. So uh, FlexiRobots is focused on the development of flexible robots for intelligent automation of precision agriculture operations is an H 2020 uh, project that is being coordinated by ATOS. And as you know, uh, during the last years, and thanks to the introduction of new digital technologies like IoT, big data, or artificial intelligence, the traditional procedures and tools used in agriculture are being radically transformed. IoT sensors are deployed in the, in the crops in order to collect real-time information and observations from the soils, from the environment. And this information is then stored, processed, and used uh, to make uh, more intelligent uh, decisions, uh, discovering patterns, uh, generating forecasts. Uh, and in, as part of this trend, drones and robots are starting to be used as an additional and powerful way to obtain high quality information from the oops, from the crops and to execute also actions, including uh, fertilizers or spreading or even uh, uh, harvesting. Uh, nevertheless, in most of the cases, uh, current agro-robotic systems are designed to automate just very specific tasks, being highly specialized and working in isolation, uh, in many cases with respect to, uh, to the rest of the, of the systems deployed in the, in the crops. Uh, moreover, the usage uh, raises some concerns, as also Rico has introduced before for Corosec project, with respect to the potential safety risks for the human operators uh, working in this case in the in the fields, or even potential damages that they could cause in the in the infrastructures due to their weight and big dimensions. Uh, we must take also into account that uh, uh, we need to have a specialized training. Uh, for the management and operations of the robots, as is in the case of drones that must be managed by pilots with a license. And all these aspects are leading to low return of investment and high risk uh, for the partners, which prevent the definite adoption of these technologies in larger uh, scale in our, in our fields. If we compare the issues of using uh, large individual robots against fleets of smaller ones, we can see that some of them of, this, of these risks could be uh, really mitigated. Uh, the usage of fleets of smaller robots imply less risks in terms of safety, safety because they cannot cause the same 
damage, obviously. Uh, also, if one of them of they uh, fail, uh, we can handle the situation by replanning the, the mission with the rest of the working units instead of just stopping the normal activities of our farms, uh, which uh, would suppose uh, important economic losses. And they are also more respectful with the field and the environment. Um, having appropriate tools, they can be managed and controlled uh, just with a single operator. So Flexi Robots' goal is to make multi-robot systems cost-effective by employing uh, multi-heterogeneous uh, versatile robots uh, through adaptive mission control mechanisms and enabling an agricultural data economy. Uh, the project aims to build uh, new systems composed of multiple heterogeneous robots that are able to collaborate uh, to, to accomplish these complex missions and they will be integrated within the rest of the systems uh, in, the, in the fields uh, including also uh, the possibility to collect information uh, from the IoT sensors and from other uh, already uh, used uh, platforms and to exploit this data using artificial intelligence. Uh, to make this possible, the project has a consortium involving uh, 16 partners from eight European countries, covering a wide range of multidisciplinary and complementary uh, competencies, as you can see uh, in the slide. So in Flexi Robots project, we are going to define a reference architecture and to implement uh, the enablers uh, to build a mission control of heterogeneous multi-robot systems, which will collaborate uh, to accomplish uh, complex missions for precision agriculture, integrating planning and supervising functionalities. We aim also to leverage uh, the work that has been done in initiatives like international data spaces to break the silos between different uh, platforms and opening uh, a new door uh, for uh, new business models uh, for the farmers. Uh, AI uh, power models will be embedded in the in the robots uh, for perception, navigation, and decision making. But they will be also used by uh, the farmers uh, as a service or being integrated into the already existing uh, solutions uh, for uh, decision support. And the project will also uh, consider strategizing, accessing, and managing uh, geospatial information. Uh, we are going to take into account the requirements uh, proposed by the high-level expert group of artificial intelligence uh, for uh, trustworthy AI, providing also guidelines about their specification, specific application in the agriculture domain. And the project uh, includes three rear wall larger scale uh, pilots, as we will see uh, in the next uh, slides. Uh, so, a common platform uh, is going to be developed, uh, considering uh, several layers. Uh, first, interoperability uh, through the usage of standards like ISOBAS or the Open Geospatial uh, Consortium. Then we will have the core uh, services uh, with the AI platform and common uh, services and functionalities and the mission control center. And finally, uh, the applications that will be built on top of the platform. Uh, about pilots, uh, we have one in Spain that is focused on uh, grapevines and where we are going to use uh, AI and robotic systems in order to early detect uh, pests, to apply efficiently uh, treatments and also to transport the grapes uh, con combining persons and uh, robots. A second pilot uh, will, take, will take place in Finland. Uh, in the north of Helsinki, focus on rape seeds. And in this case, uh, an additional challenge is uh, the weather conditions. And again, we are talking about pest control, uh, rumex plants weeding and silage harvesting. And the third pilot will be uh, hosted uh, between uh, Serbia and Lithuania. And here, what we aim is to demonstrate the utility, adaptability and scalability of the proposed uh, solution working in, similar, in a similar crop, but in two different countries in parallel. So the final uh, goal is that the, the project uh, demonstrates the potential for robotic systems at the scale in the agriculture uh, sector, operating to over uh, extended periods of, of time, uh, contributing to reduce the uh, current technical and commercial uh, risks, and also supporting uh, the role of uh, digital innovation hubs uh, in the transfer of technology. So that's all from my side. Thanks so much. 
Thank you very much. And uh, let's continue to our next uh, speaker. And I'm introducing to you Annalie Rose, project manager at Civita Estonia. And today, Annalie is going to be presenting us the project Probotics for EU. Please, Annalie, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for introducing me. And uh, thank you also to the colleagues uh, for this impressive presentations of uh, use cases which you are working on. I am going to introduce you the Robotics for EU project, uh, which is a coordination and support action. And uh, let's take a look at what, what are our goals and aims and how we work together with other projects, for example, with those who are who were presented here uh, just a few minutes ago. So what are we aiming for? As coordination and support action, we are focusing on four different robotics areas, uh, agri-food being one of them. And uh, what is my, our main aim? Our main aim is to make sure that robots are in the future in Europe adopted more and more. We all know that there are definitely economic uh, benefits uh, which robotics uh, will bring to our societies and lives. However, we also see that uh, there are several challenges uh, which arise if we are talking about more widespread adoption of uh, robots. So, and this is why we would like to provide some support uh, to, the, to our societies that the barriers which might be there are reduced. And uh, what does it mean? Obviously, uh, seen from the technological perspective, uh, the development of uh, robotics technologies and AI-powered robots is really rapid, and we, see, and we see a lot of potential here. However, we also see that there are some concerns uh, which are maybe not related directly to the technological development, but on the impact which these technologies may, might have to the society. So this is why we think, and we are, we are appointed basically by the European Commission to advocate for the non-technological aspects of robots, which are ethical, legal, socioeconomic, uh, privacy, cybersecurity, and, and also safety aspects. So, and uh, how to address uh, these issues? For us, it means that definitely all the stakeholders have to be engaged. It means that we would like to build a bridge uh, between the industry, researchers, citizens, and policymakers. And we have agreed among our consortium that we use a term responsible robotics if we speak about those non-technological aspects. So if we consider the societal aspects and the impact which robots might have, then we think that this is a new term that we could use. So how do we, how do we achieve this everything, uh, what I explained? As first, definitely, we wanted to know that uh, what are the opinions of people and the stakeholders around us? And this is why we carried, uh, carried uh, on a survey among the stakeholders and we specifically also asked the citizens, also those who have never interacted with robots before that, what is the perception uh, they have or what do they imagine if they hear something about the robots and the benefits what robots uh, can, can bring them uh, as citizens or as professional users of, of robots. And uh, we organize, of course, uh, a lot of workshops uh, also in the, in the area of agri-food to raise awareness uh, on these topics. And importantly, we would like to bring together companies and end users of robots to brainstorm together that how we could develop technologies which are with, uh, let's say, positive societal impact. And this is why our consortium is also developing a societal readiness model and a maturity assessment model, because if we speak about non-technological aspects of robots, then how can we know that we have 
complied with everything that uh, would, would be needed. And we see that, of course, depending on the area we are operating, uh, then either ethical values, uh, socioeconomic needs, data issues, but also, of course, legal concerns and education and management issues should be, should be addressed. So we are working uh, on the maturity assessment model, uh, and uh, we would like to do it definitely together with all the stakeholders so that there would be some use out of this model for the uh, developers of uh, robots and, uh, and of course, uh, also to the citizens and professional users of robots. So this is why uh, we had a survey uh, with uh, more than 1,200 responses and 21% uh, uh, of the responses came from the agri-food sector. So we are really proud that also the sector was very strongly represented. And so what did we find out? We found out that actually, uh, of course, fear of technological unemployment is the biggest it doesn't matter whether we ask uh, the robotics uh, community or also the policymakers, they all agree that this is, this is a very common fear. Uh, of course, maybe uh, this is something that is not true, but this is what, how people feel that, uh, that they are a bit afraid uh, of, of this aspect. And what was really uh, impressive was that policymakers considered Actually, 53% of the policymakers thought that agri-food is the sector where these socioeconomic issues are the most pressing ones. And 42% uh, of all people who responded to our survey mentioned that specifically education and engagement is important in, uh, in agri-food area if you talk about robotics. So we saw also here uh, in the introduction of the previous project that definitely training and information of how these robots should be used is very important. And uh, of course, also safety uh, uh, was highlighted uh, strongly by the, by the uh, people responding to the survey. So what is our aim and how we would like to make the impact is that at the end of this project, we hope that we have raised awareness about positive impacts of robots. Uh, as we know now that what are the concerns of the community. And we would like to make people also more aware that which are the solutions uh, out there, uh, because this was one of the concerns which was highlighted that um, people are not aware uh, on the different robotic solutions uh, which uh, they could benefit of. And uh, as a result of our project, we hope that uh, the professional users and citizens around Europe, uh, they know more about robots also in the agri-food sector and they have less fears and more positive attitude about how robots can really make a, make a positive uh, change and, uh, and difference and how they don't take away the jobs, but rather, uh, rather replace, let's say, the, rep the dangerous or repetitive uh, tasks and people can, instead of that, focus on some other tasks where they uh, could really contribute more uh, in, in more meaningful ways. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Thank you so much, Anneli. Okay, and right away, I would like to continue. And uh, my first question, just to continue on what you just have said. Uh, so in your opinion, in which areas or sectors can uh, robotics be applied with the most efficiency or most success? As you said, you are uh, spreading the importance of the robotics in different sectors. And uh, on, based on the survey, what you have that recently done, it looks that agri-food sector is the most in, um, interested in robotics or maybe just the survey shows. So, so please uh, share your opinion. Thank you very much for the question. So indeed, we are focusing on four different areas, which are quite different also. So agri-food, 
is definitely one of the areas where I see that we also have quite a lot of uh, European projects. So when we uh, made a survey and uh, collected some good practices, then we saw that uh, that luckily, really, uh, there are projects out there which are focusing a lot uh, on the agri-food robots. And maybe this is one of the reasons why agri-food was highlighted also in this survey specifically. But um, I think that uh, across those four areas, uh, so healthcare, inspection and maintenance, uh, agri-food and age of production, uh, I think there are uh, everywhere opportunities where we can can make use of the robots more in the future, but just um, sometimes uh, I really, I'm, I'm actually convinced that people, they don't know which kind of solutions are out there. And if you talk about the agri-food robots, then actually according to the responses, then uh, it, it was really considered important that the solutions that are created, that they prevent harm to animals, for example, and especially environmental and also energy saving targets were highlighted so that uh, the citizens and also robo robotics community, they saw a clear benefits which every agricultural robots can bring. And, uh, and of course, uh, that it could increase safety and security at the workplace as well. So I think that this is uh, the area also where the colleagues are working. So, um, so I think that uh, all the sectors have their own uh, potential. Okay, I'm gonna uh, continue with our all guests. And um, well, um, Rico, you are a prof uh, Associate Professor of Cognitive Robotics and Intelligent Systems at Maastricht University. So I'm sure uh, you uh, face different uh, applications of robotics in different sectors. So what would be your opinion? Is uh, agri-food could be a state art where the robotics uh, is applied or maybe not? There are many things for your question. Um, yeah, indeed, we see also from the university and from uh, the many collaborations that we have with the robotics companies and uh, end users actually, that there's quite some uh, push forward uh, in robotics and its application actually in many different fields. Um, there is, uh, besides the food sector, of course, also um, the uh, entire sector of like manufacturing industries and the logistics sectors actually, uh, who benefit uh, strongly and who are all, like uh, traditionally actually very strong actually in robotics. Um, what I see definitely also is, and that's something that uh, yeah I find uh, very interesting and very um, meaningful, is that this a push that originally started actually in the manufacturing industry now uh, makes also its way into the agri-food sector. And I fully share um, um, the opinion of uh, Anneli. And I say like, uh, yes, the uh, agri-food uh, sector is actually going to be like one of the next uh, big steps where uh, robotization actually will have a major impact. And I think it's uh, not just like a matter of like that we do their robotization for the sake of like uh, trying out robots or running robots. It's more also there's like an incredible need uh, from uh, industries, from the agri-food industries actually, that uh, more robots actually are being deployed and better robots are being built for these challenging conditions in the agri-food sector. Thank you so much, Rico. And um, I'm gonna go to Daniel and well, robotics and artificial intelligence, it seems it goes together. So in your opinion, what would be the key challenges that artificial intelligence and robotics could help solve us? Yeah, okay, thanks so much for, for your question. I think that uh, Anneli already uh, described some of the, of the challenges that we are facing right now in the in the agriculture domain, not only in the agriculture domain, but okay, mainly mainly here because it's a topic we are targeting today. Uh, you know that there are several tasks that are very physically intensive. Uh, that the, the the labor conditions of the uh, workers in the in the farms at this moment probably are not uh, the better in, in some in some countries on, in some fields. So for sure, uh, the usage of this kind of AI and 
robotic te robotics technologies could help uh, to improve these these conditions and as Anneli already said uh, to move the the human workers to a more uh, high added value uh, tasks also i i think that in the in general uh, we are addressing uh, in many european countries the problem that young people is living uh, rural areas because they are interested in other kind of activities and indeed if we achieve to improve uh, the conditions of uh, of our fields of our crops of our farms with this kind of ai and robotics technologies uh, probably we will achieve that uh, younger younger people stay and that they uh, work again in this in this sector and in this way uh, we can reinforce a bit uh, the activity of our uh, rural areas in, in Europe. So I think that uh, AI and robotics uh, could really help in, this, in these two aspects. Thank you, Daniel, very much. And I would like to continue actually on the topic that you just mentioned. Um, everyone is talking about the population in the whole Europe. We are talking about uh, um, missing villages already, uh, youth is moving out and etc. So does really um, robotics, uh, disruptive technologies can help us to bring back uh, people to rural areas? And if yes, what should be done? How it should be done? Anneli, please. I think it's, a, it's an extremely important topic. So uh, because if we talk about societal impact, we also are talking at the same time about the societal challenges and problems. So, uh, and this is uh, the major impact which I think technologies can bring. That if we have societal challenges and we can develop technologies which offer solutions to those challenges, and and can really make a make make a difference. Uh, then we have. Then I, I'm convinced that we can achieve something big. Um, so, how this could be done? I think this is a million-dollar question, probably. But uh, one of those societal problems which we have are indeed that people are leaving uh, countryside. I think across Europe that there is urbanization. Uh, also, the population is aging. So, uh, and what is the image of the agri-food sector is probably uh, currently in many countries that it's a very, let's say, hard work. <laughs> you, you need to use a lot of uh, physical power and, uh, and cl clearly there is a shortage of, of labor in, in uh, several European countries. So I think that if uh, there is a technological advancement, which really also enables to let's say, improve the image of this area that, that it's not anymore really hard physical work, but that there are intelligent machines, there is uh, really intelligent technology that can help you and, uh, and it uh, will change the way how we actually work in the agri-food sector, then I believe that if there are from the governments also some supportive measures how to keep uh, the life in a rural, rural areas alive, I think that this could make a difference so that, that we, can, we can really boost uh, the, the problem um, which we, that we can solve the problem which we have with uh, shortage of uh, labor force uh, because uh, we see also other problems uh, like uh, if we talk about uh, aging population, it, at the same time, we also talk about limited uh, resources and about food security. So definitely, I think that addressing addressing the limited uh, uh, workforce work issue with uh, with new uh, emerging technologies is very very crucial. So I hope that this will help also the governments to make uh, respective. <laughs> policies and changes so that uh, all these important challenges uh, can be addressed pro properly. Thank uh, But when we talk that uh, you will be attracted to the rural, rural areas, but we have a 
uh, older citizens already living and working there. Can we help them with the reskilling or upskilling? Is it possible? Or maybe robotics is um, a very hard technology and very hard to understand. Uh, how can we improve access to robotic technologies to end users? Uh, please, Driko, what is your uh, opinion on that? Yeah, you're raising also like here, like a um, very important question. Um, so um, yeah, I fully agree, of course, that uh, we need the robotic technology in order to uh, support uh, human labor, especially in those areas where um, we simply don't find enough human workers anymore. But you're also right, like um, there has to be like additional uh, work actually in order to make these uh, technologies then also accessible, um, both to, yeah, uh, maybe like older generations actually, which uh, like maybe with people like who have like less access uh, and less exp uh, experience with robots so far, but also to make this actually also attractive uh, to younger generations. And I think a lot of exciting work is happening actually uh, in uh, Europe, and uh, we have to yeah, facilitate this work more in order to make these robots uh, simply uh, more intelligent um, so that uh, yeah, the uh, instruction to a robot becomes as easy and as straightforward as you would uh, uh, you instruct like a human worker on a, a particular job. Um, for this, uh, robots have to yeah, develop uh, a lot more elaborated cognitive skills. Uh, we're really talking going away from uh, like a standard harvesting machine that just gets automated in doing the harvesting towards like a, a cognitive system that uh, understands instructions uh, and that can also react in a flexible and in a, um, uh, like a yeah, clever way, like a human worker actually would do. Um, and there's a lot of work actually on this intersection between uh, robotics and artificial intelligence in making uh, agile robotic workers um, that are um, yeah, not just like uh, good and uh, provide like high quality in the uh, operations that they're providing, but especially also uh, when it comes to in the interaction between the robots and the humans. Um, if you like um, a very practical example, also like from uh, the Corsic project, um, we are indeed working on uh, these robot cells where human robot workers will uh, operate on a daily business together with these robots. And we cannot expect that uh, yeah, um, skilled workers who are like uh, uh, working actually uh, in insect farms uh, will all have programming skills and will be able to communicate uh, with a robot uh, at the level that uh, uh, programmers typically would do or like roboticists would do. So we're working on things like also simple haptic interfaces. So guiding actually a robot, showing it what you wanted to do. Uh, in order so the robot actually can understand what its next tasks actually are and what uh, processes the robots actually should be executing. And I think these kind of interfaces can also be made ready uh, to um, yeah, people who have like less experience with robots in such a way that uh, they become uh, valuable assets actually uh, also in the urban environments. Thank you very much, Rico. And, uh... It was um, an interesting point that you've said that robots, we are not uh, talking about smart robots. We already are talking about intelligent robots. And if we talk about an artificial intelligence robots, uh, they are expected to chase production as we were talking, uh, compensate the lack of manpower, uh, reduce production costs taking over an attractive jobs, for example, which are risky as we heard heavy or dirty and reducing the burden of food production on the environment. But in spite of those promises that we are talking, however, artificial intelligence robots for agri-food also give um, rise to ethical questions. So, and concerns, of course. So please, Daniel, share your opinion on the ethical part and the concern part about artificial intelligence robots. Okay, thanks. Indeed, it's, it's one of the uh, very challenging question that we are addressing, I think, in the, in the three projects right now and in the industry. Uh, so the first question that comes to, to my mind is clearly, okay, what is going to happen with all these workers that somehow will be replaced by, by, the, by the robots? Because it is true that we are saying, okay, that we need to move uh, some of these people that now is taking care of the most uh, difficult or the most, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 
the worst part of the of the of the tasks we need to move them to more high quality and added value uh, jobs but it is true that some of these people may not find uh, an easy uh, an easy upskilling uh, plan uh, so uh, we need to 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 rethink what we what we are going to offer to them and how we are going to uh, accommodate them in new positions so clearly this is one of the of the issues uh, of the ethical issues that we must address uh, with respect to the usage of uh, AI and robotic systems in general in the uh, in the agri-food uh, domain but also in other in other use cases then there is also an important aspect about the liability uh, so what happens if one of these systems uh, causes uh, damage in the in the fields in the crops or in any other uh, in any other aspect of the environment where they are operating uh, clearly this kind of uh, of uh, robots uh, incorporate many different components they incorporate uh, software uh, they incorporate uh, or interact with uh, third party applications with third party uh, modules uh, so it is difficult uh, to understand in which part of the system uh, the problem has been originated and also uh, which company or which stakeholder is the responsible for the damages and this is something that was already raised by the, uh, the by the emerging regulation that the european commission uh, is uh, is proposing and also uh, as rico said before uh, we must also address uh, aspects about the interaction between the between the human workers and the robots uh, because we are not thinking about the scenarios where the robots or the intelligent machinery uh, are going to operate uh, in an isolated way by themselves we are talking about uh, collaborative uh, use cases and in this sense we need to uh, find uh, appropriate mechanisms uh, for these two types of actors uh, to work together efficiently, uh, safely and also uh, we need to find technical mechanisms so that humans can uh, oversight uh, the work of these uh, robots. So in my eyes these are some of the, of the ethical issues that we must uh, address. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. And I would like to continue on the um, other question. Uh, we talk about a lot of uh, big uh, objectives and um, with the Green Deal, what's coming up and what we need to achieve, what are our goals, and those goals are very big. So uh, on one side, we say that robotics can help us to achieve environmental goals. From the other side, I hear that robots are not that uh, environmentally friendly. So how is it? Please share your opinion. I'm going to start from Emily. Thank you for the question. So I think that here the colleagues developing uh, robots on daily basis uh, can also give their opinion uh, that what about the uh, yeah, what about the sustainability uh, of robots or whether they, they as such are green? So I think that as uh, in many cases, we have to assess uh, the pros and cons of this. So that whether uh, the benefit which robots can bring uh, is higher uh, than the, the possible damage which they can bring. Because obviously there are many issues which are not regulated currently. Also, Daniel mentioned uh, that there is some legislation underway and European Commission is also heavily working on standardization of robots and in, in regulating this area which uh, we maybe even don't know how this is going to develop and which uh, what is going to be out there, what we should uh, regulate. So I think that we have to find a balance here as, as very often in, in life and we have to still uh, see that how we can uh, consider all those important points uh, which are non-technological aspects of robots including their environmental impact in the development process of robots so this is why also at European scale actually uh, 
interdisciplinary collaboration is very important so that that we could actually combine the knowledge of uh, of uh, technological people and social scientists and uh, uh, social scientists uh, to to foresee all those points and also do some life cycle assessment for example of uh, of technologies to see that whether they are sustainable or not Thank you, Anneli. And Ruha, what is your opinion on this? Or maybe if uh, we can probably make sustainable robots or green robots, but then maybe the manufacturing price is very, very high and it's not effective anymore. What is your opinion? Um, yeah, many thanks for the question. This is indeed a very challenging one, um, because on the one hand, we want to have um, highly reliable um, technology components um, that are um, yeah, operating also in challenging conditions. Um, I'm thinking especially again again about the uh, agri-food sector where things might get uh, dirty, uh, yeah, water, corrosion. So all of these things actually scream for um, technology that are um, yeah, very sturdy and uh, viable. Um, at the same time, of course, there is like a strong interest in uh, making um, sustainable technologies, so developing actually in new types of robots uh, for materials actually um, that are also environmentally friendly. Um, I would say like at the moment, um, there's like still a lot of work actually that has to go into making new robotic components. Uh, and you really think about the robots themselves, um, making them actually environmentally friendly. But uh, the main impact actually that we can make already actually in the agri-food sector is um, the type of um, circular engineering that we can actually deploy there and my understanding there is um, that robots indeed can play like a very vital part in these uh, processes. Um, not uh, just as a replacement of human workers, but actually as a support actually, uh, because you can start uh, doing um, uh, active food also in uh, such conditions that uh, are maybe like even less human friendly. I'm thinking about like um, not just um, uh, operating actually uh, under uh, daylight uh, on in like open land, but like actually um, uh, food and uh, crop production actually in uh, yeah uh, well controlled factory environments. Um, so there's quite some work actually in these di directions, and uh, we see that also particular for um, yeah, insect farms actually, where the uh, yeah main impact actually when it comes to environmental food really comes from the type of food production, um, less actually uh, impact actually from the robot components themselves. So I think the robots in comparison to like uh, the uh, yeah, type of uh, agri-food production, um, the robots actually have a way lower footprint actually on the environment than the uh, agri-food production itself. Thank you. And uh, Daniel, as we can see, robots can um, make a good environmental impact and be green. Um, but when we talk uh, that robots are based on artificial intelligence, uh, first question would be what other disruptive technologies could be applied to the robotics? And uh, do you think we can lower the actual end costs of the robotics? So is there going to be a time when uh, this, uh, when robots going to be uh, quite affordable to everyone because right now uh, at least in agri-food sector we know uh, farmers say that it's a very expensive to apply robots to the farms please Daniel. yes i think that okay this has happened uh, with every every uh, single technology uh, in the last uh, in the last years that at the beginning uh, they are a bit uh, expensive but with the time they become more affordable. Uh, I think that the, on one hand, um, yeah, uh, for sure, we need to, to create uh, more versatile uh, robots that can cover uh, more uh, wider uh, set of, of tasks uh, within the, within the uh, operations, within the, within the groups, so that in this way, uh, the, the amount of investment that must be done uh, can be uh, actually uh, better compensated uh, yeah, uh, without more uh, intense uh, use. Uh, also, if we are able to uh, create uh, robots that, uh, as Rico said before, uh, can be built with uh, 
with a more friendly, uh, environmental friendly or even recycled uh, materials, uh, for sure this will also help uh, to, to reduce the costs. Uh, there is also some, some work that can be done uh, in, the, in the area of artificial intelligence. So indeed this is connected to the, to the previous point by, about the uh, sustainability of, of the robots. Why? Because, you know, in order to train uh, very complex uh, deep learning uh, models that at this, at this time are uh, quite common in many in many aspects and even in the in the robotics uh, in the robotic systems you need a lot of data you need a lot of computing power and this indeed requires a lot of, of energy uh, um, it is the part let's say where the ai is not so uh, sustainable so if we are able to to uh, develop new ai systems that are able to uh, to learn uh, to evolve dynamically in the fields, in the structure environments, for sure this will give us uh, more, uh, more versatile uh, robots, uh, more uh, sustainable uh, robots, and it will contribute also to reduce somehow uh, the, the costs of, the, of, of these systems. Uh, there is also another, another pillar where uh, robots could increase uh, uh, their, uh, their economic uh, costs, uh, and it's uh, about the, the maintenance and the, and the need uh, for uh, a specialized uh, training in order to operate this kind of, of systems or to maintain this kind of systems. Uh, so if we are able also to create uh, robotics uh, technologies that can be somehow uh, controlled by any uh, any operator or by any uh, app, any person, uh, for sure we will also reduce uh, some of these costs, and they will be, uh, yeah, they will be uh, incorporated in much more uh, environments and scenarios. Thank you very much. And well, maybe based on your projects that uh, you are implementing right now and your use cases, um, maybe you could provide the most. Um, efficient part or maybe the most successful that you already see part in which parts of the agri-food sector uh, robotics could be applied um, the best. Um, Daniel? Yeah, in the case of uh, Flexi Robots uh, project, we are focused on the on the farmers, uh, on the farmers or on the agriculture uh, part. Uh, we are trying to uh, develop systems that are able to early detect uh, pests and diseases in the field uh, to apply in an accurate way uh, fertilizers and pesticides uh, and this is also connected to uh, the improving the uh, environmental sustainability of the crops uh, themselves. Um, and this is where I think that at least from the flexi robots uh, perspective, uh, we think that uh, uh, robotic systems can make a difference. Uh, then, of course, uh, there are much more uh, applications uh, in the in the journey from the park from the farm to the fork, uh, in logistics, in processing, uh, or even in the in the in the last mile in the in the retailer. Uh, but yeah, in our case, we are we are covering this first uh, phase. Let's say. Thank you, Enrico. I know your project is about uh, insect farming, but uh, my question is, can it be applied uh, wider in a wider spectrum um, in the other parts of the agriculture, your systems? Yes, absolutely. So um, GoSec indeed uh, focuses with its uh, pilots and with its uh, studies actually on um, the insect farming particularly, but has a much wider scope uh, in terms of developments. And I'm thinking here about uh, quite a few different aspects. So we have been uh, um, yeah, splitting the system actually into uh, multiple very useful components. It starts with the robots that are actually built and um, which are taking care of the logistical processes within the insect farms. Um, these robots, of course, are widely applicable also to um, other agriculture, uh, agri other agri-food um, uh, applications. Um, so, um, yeah, if you have like autonomous uh, guided vehicles actually driving inside an insect farm, the same uh, vehicles, of course, 
maybe with some modifications could also be uh, deployed and used actually somewhere else. Um, another type of uh, robot that uh, Corsac focuses on is, um, yeah, I call them uh, in, a, in a nice way, uh, the nursing robots. So these are the ones actually which have to be uh, quite agile uh, and um, uh, very careful because they're really uh, doing the uh, fine manipulation actually um, of the insects. Um, so you can imagine like if you have like uh, uh, clever robots or like intelligent robots that uh, are uh, capable of uh, uh, detecting all kind of different situations and then uh, react accordingly and manipulate actually uh, in a very careful way. Uh, again, the same robots, of course, could be deployed and used also for um, other plants or um, yeah, uh, it may possibly also like uh, other types of animals uh, because the skills that you're developing there are uh, still very useful. And then last but not least, um, I think, and that's also something that I uh, uh, learned again from Daniel, um, these uh, robots by themselves, of course, uh, as individuals are, of course, very interesting, but um, they really show all their uh, possibilities once you start integrating them into an ecosystem. And um, many of the European projects, including Corsect, of course, work not just on the individual level of the robot, but generating uh, the complete framework around this. Uh, really putting uh, people in charge, actually uh, helping them actually to keep track of the operations of all these robots, coordinating actually all the different robots and providing decision support systems so that um, um, the processes within the insect farms or maybe more generally like in uh, agriculture uh, can be optimized and uh, knowledge can be shared actually between different experts in uh, these agriculture processes. So all these technologies that are being developed are, of course, widely applicable and are not just focused on one particular application. Thank you so much, Rikon. Uh, we are almost out of time. So I would like to ask each of the participants very shortly just to conclude. So what is the future of agri-food robotics in EU and beyond? Please, Annelie. I would like to conclude with a message uh, that I think there is great potential as explained here by the colleagues, but we should, we should uh, use the slogan of the European Commission if we develop the robots that uh, technology should be de developed with and for society. So I believe that many of those challenges which were mentioned here can be tackled in case we work together with uh, the end users of our uh, products. So I just really encourage everyone to break those silos and uh, work uh, together with colleagues from other areas, work together with uh, the users of your products so that even if you invest a bit more at the beginning, it can actually really bring you benefits and um, and it can really shift the future of uh, agri-food robots. Thank you. Please recall. Yeah, to summarize um, some of the um, yeah, developments actually that we uh, really see uh, pushing forward. Um, first of all, of course, there is like a strong push for robotization uh, in many domains, and especially also in the agri-food sector. And what we see there is that, uh, especially cognitive robots, so robots that really uh, gain a better understanding of the environment and also of uh, yeah, the plants that they take care of or the animals that they take care of, uh, really like the future. Um, we are looking at uh, robots that are uh, no longer hidden somewhere in a factory uh, where you know, humans like you know, hardly get actually into contact with them. But we are talking really about robots that uh, make it out uh, into the field um, and then also closely collaborate with humans there. And uh, major uh, yeah, feedback or like conclusion also, of course, here is that uh, yeah, I'm very happy that the EU actually is addressing many of the ethical concerns and that also the uh, European projects uh, that we are taking care of typically have very strong partners actually uh, from the ethical and legal side because we have to integrate this well into society and uh, work actually for the humans, uh, not just for the technology. Thank you and please, Daniel. Uh, to conclude, I think that I fully agreed with Anneli and with Rico. Uh, we need to develop new AI and robotic systems that are uh, human-centric, uh, that are developed uh, together with uh, with end users and with the rest of the uh, stakeholders that are involved in the in the agri-food agri sector. And we need to ensure that they are 
uh, trustworthy, that they respect uh, the, the principles and the values of, uh, of the European uh, Union uh, so that uh, they can really make uh, impact uh, in the in the agri food in the agri food uh, uh, processes and use cases uh, because uh, yeah for sure we are talking about as Rico said before environments that require a close interaction uh, between these robots and the, and the human workers there uh, so uh, I think that these are the main challenges that we need to address in the next years. Thank you so much. And I would like to thank all the participants in this panelist. Thank you for presenting your fantastic projects. We are uh, going to be looking at your results and their impact and hoping for the more projects to come in the future. And I would like to end with the sentence that we need to change our uh, thinking, our state of mind. The robots are not future anymore. They are already reality. So we need to understand that we're going to be working a lot with this technology now and in the future. So good luck everyone and thank you for a fruitful discussion.